we're going to talk about some more information regarding multiplying and dividing radicals. These are two laws, two rules that are stated using variables a and b that are there to represent any number. So this first line is saying that the radical of any number, if we multiply it to another radical, we can multiply those two numbers and, and have the product inside one radical. So if we do things like square root of 2 times square root of 32, both inside of a radical, we can multiply the 2 times 32 to get 64, and that's inside of a radical. And that might be a helpful move because 2 and 32 were not perfect squares, but the product 64 is a perfect square. We could simplify that radical to equal 8. Another thing we would do that's using this same rule would be to do the reverse. If we started with a number in a radical, for example, radical 18, we can rewrite that 18 as a product of two radicals. If I know that 9 times 2 is 18, then this is allowed to take a radical 18 and split it up into two radicals with multiplication. And that might be helpful because there I see a perfect square. So the, nine, the radical 9 equals 3. This radical 2 I could not simplify. So I have 3 radical 2. So this rule for multiplication is helpful for simplifying the radicals. And understand that we can take two radicals and multiply them together. And it's still, the product is still in a radical. And we can do the reverse. We can take a number and split it up into a multiplication of radicals. This follows a main idea and understand that these are things we can only do with multiplying and dividing. When it comes to adding or subtracting, we have to think combine like terms only. And if, if our radicals are not like terms, there's nothing we can do with them. So what we're looking at, this idea with if two numbers are inside of a radical, we can multiply them together, and we'll see we can do the same with divide. So those are ideas we can use with multiplying and dividing only. Let's look at a couple of examples for this law, which is that if you have two radicals set up in a fraction or with a divide, you can divide the radicands, A over B, and that must stay inside of a radical. So if we did problems like radical 50 over radical 2, the radical 50 and the radical 2 are not perfect squares. I could maybe do some simplifying with that radical 50, but a better move, I think, is to do the divide, do the 50 divided by 2, and put that quotient in the radical. There I can definitely see, definitely see a nice perfect square that radical 25 is 5. So we're going to look at a few examples more along the dividing and fraction ideas, but understand that when they are, when the two numbers are inside of a radical, there's multiplication we can do, and there is division that we can do. Here's our first example with fractions. As a rule, this is what I've learned just from my experience that I think problems are easiest if I try to set, simplify the fraction first and save the simplifying the radicals for second. So this comes into play with these problems where I see a fraction made up of radicals. And my belief, and this is based upon experience, it is easiest to go through these problems by first thinking about is there any sort of simplifying I can do with this radical? So I'm not, I'm sorry, with the fraction. I'm not thinking about pairs of factors. I'm first just looking at this fraction, the 32x over 2x. What can I do to simplify this fraction? And I'm not thinking about the fact that it's in a radical just yet. 32 over 32x over 2x. So we do have x over x that can be canceled. And the 32 over 2, this divides evenly, it equals 16. So just by thinking about simplifying the fraction, I've made great progress in this problem. This fraction, it's now just a 16. Now that I've finished dealing with the fraction part, now I think about simplifying this radical. 
Either I know that this radical 16 is a perfect square that equals 4, and that's probably one you should know. If I'm getting used to looking at the prime factors, then from 16 I would find four twos. So that's basically two pairs of two that can come out of the radical. One, two from that pair, one, two from that pair, and, and that product is our same answer, four. So we're going to look at another couple of examples, but the main idea I'd like to convey to you is with problems like this where we have radicals in a fraction, I like to think about simplifying the fraction part first, and once I've done that, I think about simplifying the radicals. Here's our next example, and it's not an example to be tricky, but it's just one to illustrate a point of what is my flow through these problems. I first want to think about, can I simplify the fraction? I know that a radical 36x squared over radical 25y squared, they're both in a radical, so they can be combined into a single radical. But if I start to think about simplifying this radical, I have x is in the numerator, y is in the denominator, so I can't do any canceling there. And then thinking about this 36 over 25, there's no simplifying I can do with this fraction. Uh, they won't both evenly divide by 2 or 3 or 5 or any number. So 36 over 25 is a simplified fraction. So I still want to think each time, first try to simplify the fraction, but I understand that there are some problems where there just won't be any simplifying that, for me to do in the fraction. So I just move on and say next is to simplify this radical. There are a couple of different approaches you can use. I want to show you my approach to be as similar as possible to the way I was simplifying before. So I'm not going to try to do anything different. I'm going to stick to the steps that I'm comfortable with for simplifying radicals, which is to look for prime factors or perfect squares. Now 36, to be frank, that's one that we should just know that 36 is 6 times 6. And 25, we should know that perfect square is 5 times 5. So I haven't gone for two twos and two threes. If you would prefer to do that, that 36 you're not seeing as a perfect square, so you go for a factor tree and find all the prime factors, that method will still work. It will still give you the correct answer. It's a little bit too much writing, and at this stage in the game, I think it's it's pretty important that we know about these perfect squares. Okay, so a couple of sixes. From the x, it's an x squared, so we've got a pair of x's, and we have a pair of y's. That's a y. Now that I have the radicand broken up into its factors, I'm looking for pairs. So if I see a pair of factors, I can bring it outside of the radical. What's important is that I just keep Factors from the numerator need to stay in the numerator, and ones from the denominator would need to stay in the denominator. So a pair of sixes can bring out one six. A pair of x's, there's the one x. A pair of fives in the denominator, so it's one five in the denominator, and a pair of y's, one y. There's our simplified fraction.